Today, I'm giving Andorra, one of the worst international teams ever, four perfect wonder kids to see if it'll help them win a World Cup. We've got a perfect striker, centre mid, centre back and goalkeeper to try and improve the spine of a squad, which I think is the best way to improve a team. I've downloaded an Andorran league structure and placed these wonder kids at four different Andorran clubs, although they do end up moving on to some of the biggest clubs in the world and have some insane careers. But we are most interested in these players' international careers, and the big question is how well can they perform for Andorra. We're going to jump forward four years at a time in World Cup cycles to see how Andorra perform at different World Cups. Hopefully they actually get to a World Cup in the first place though. I do a ton of experiments just like this on the channel using Football Manager, so if you want to see more content just like this, feel free to subscribe. You can always change your mind later on down the line. Now, all of these players are currently 16 years old, so they should be able to play for the Andorran clubs for at least two seasons before moving on to some of Europe's biggest clubs with their massive current ability. But firstly, we're going to jump five years in the future to 2027, a year after the 2026 World Cup. The players are now 20 21 years old and the perfect keeper is currently playing for Chelsea having made almost 100 appearances across his career at the club. Has got 34 caps for Andorra as well so has started to become a regular starter for Andorra. Despite them being perfect players it actually takes a few years for them at 16 years old to get into the first team internationally so they wouldn't have actually got there until they were 18 or 19 years old. The perfect defender was snapped up by PSG. He's made 85 appearances with 10 goals for PSG so far with 32 caps for Andorra and just the one goal. The perfect midfielder is also at PSG, although only played 42 times across three seasons, so there could have been an injury in there, or maybe he's just not preferred to other players for some reason. But he has made 34 caps for Andorra and scored seven goals. Yeah, his first two seasons, he just didn't do anything, really, at PSG. But then his past season has played quite a lot. The perfect striker, though, is at Real Madrid. And after 54 games in 48 appearances for FC Santa Coloma in Andorra, he scored 78 in 99 for Real Madrid. He's also scored 39 goals in 33 appearances for Andorra. Andorra, though, have gone from 151st in FIFA rankings to 87th. So they've had a pretty big rise in those first five years. But an 87th ranking suggests they didn't make the World Cup. Oh, no, they did. They made the World Cup. In 2026, they got there. And actually into the second round too. Now they were drawn against the USA and Peru and the perfect striker scored eight goals across those two group stage games to ensure they won 6-1 and 5-1 against Peru and the US but lost on penalties to Colombia. Wow. They've had an instant impact, more than I thought they would do. Oh, I love it. I love it. The Andorran striker got the golden boot in the World Cup. Beautiful. So the first four years were promising but I reckon Andorra could have done better if those four perfect players were focusing a little bit more on playing football and not focusing quite so much on playing Super Club Soccer, the sponsors of today's video. Super Club Soccer is a free-to-play football game on Steam. It's completely unique as it's a tactical turn-based game where you need to try and outwit your opponents. It's kind of like FIFA Pro Clubs meets Civilization. You create your player and then take on other people from around the world or play against the AI. Plus, as Football Manager players ourselves, we love stats and data. And that's going to be really advantageous to you playing Super Club Soccer. To be successful, you have to really think about your player's strengths and how you can get the better of your opposition's weaknesses. And clearly, our perfect players from Andorra are spending too much time doing this rather than focusing on playing football and winning Andorra a World Cup. Like I say, the game is completely free to play on Steam and I've got a link in the top line of the description to go and download it now. Well, you know what? They've done pretty well. They didn't qualify for the European Championships in 2024. It was a little bit too early for that, but they have won a ton of UEFA Nations League games across their time as well. So I think they're doing a pretty good job in the UEFA Nations League and hopefully we'll see them get up to the higher divisions in that soon. So let's jump another four years in the future to 2031. Let's see how they've done in the next World Cup. Starting off with the players, the perfect keeper is still at Chelsea, still doing very well for them with 68 caps for the national team too. The perfect defender, still at PSG, but has now got 70 caps for Andorra at the age of 25. The perfect midfielder is now at Liverpool, moving on from PSG, has got 72 caps and 27 goals for Andorra. But the perfect striker is still at Real Madrid, at 205 goals in 232 appearances for the Madrid side, with also 68 goals in 71 appearances for the national team. Whew, 167 million Liverpool paid for that perfect midfielder. 
That's big. Andorra have had a slow rise up the rankings. They're now equal 61st. That's pretty good. Hopefully we've seen some more success. The European Championships qualifying. Mm, lots of draws in there. They might not qualify for the 28 Euros and they didn't qualify for the 28 Euros. That's frustrating. UEFA Nations League though has looked pretty good. So I expect a promotion in that. The World Cup qualifying. It didn't end very well against Albania, Switzerland and Ukraine. I don't think they've made it. I don't, and they lost to Switzerland too. I don't think they've made the 2030 World Cup. <sighs> okay, well, maybe they've gone backwards a little bit, but the world ranking is higher, so we can take something from this. But I've got a good feeling about the 2034 World Cup. I reckon they'll have made it. But at the age of 29, the perfect keeper is still playing for Chelsea, 122 caps for Andorra. The perfect defender has moved from PSG to Real Madrid this past season. Looks like they've played most of the season, as well as 125 games for Andorra. The perfect midfielder has moved from Liverpool to Real Madrid and has got 123 caps for Andorra. And the perfect striker's at Real Madrid. So wow, Real Madrid must be an absolute powerhouse right now to have all of these players. Also, £850,000 per week in wages. Oh my word, they could have done it, you know. They're up to 15th in world rankings. That's, that's ridiculous. We'll start off though with the European Championships from 2032. And Andorra came third in their group behind Italy and Portugal. But they all finished on six points. It's just that Andorra had zero goal difference. But because they got six points by the best loser rule, they got through into the next round. Oh, this would not have gone down well. Andorra beat England in the second round of the European Championships, 2-1. In Scotland as well. They'd hate that. Oh my word, the quarterfinals, Andorra won that 2-0 against Switzerland. Are they going to go all the way here? Because I'm looking at the semi-finals. They beat Portugal on penalties in the semi-finals. Please tell me they won the final. Please tell me they won the final. Oh. They were so close. Oh my word, Andorra deserved the win. They deserved the win. They conceded in the 90th minute but they had 16 shots and 10 on target compared to Belgium's six and three. And loads more possession, Andorra should have won that. So it looks like Teate scored the first goal for Belgium. Doku won the ball from his corner, took the shot, it was blocked and just sort of fell to Arthur Teate. That's a bit frustrating. But moments later, the perfect striker scores from a corner, direct from a corner, but in the 90th minute, Belgium come forward. Castagne finds a man further forward. He puts the ball across the six yard. Oh, it's such poor defending. <sighs> I reckon the World Cup might have gone better for them though. They topped the group with Argentina and Canada, this time drawing on four points in Argentina, but being top on goal difference. The second round is huge with all these teams that qualify from the group stage, but they beat Syria 5-0, not bad. And then in the third round, they beat Egypt 3-0. To be fair, they've had a bit of an easier ride going through the knockouts this time around, though. Croatia are not easy, though, and they beat Croatia 2-1 in the quarterfinals. So they're through to another semi-final of a major international tournament. The semi-finals... Oh, they lost to Portugal 2-1. How close was it? Have they been FM'd again a little bit? No, to be fair, looking at this, Portugal probably deserved it on the balance of play. But it does mean they've got the opportunity to come third in the third and fourth place playoff if they can beat the Netherlands. Which they did 2-1. Oh, fantastic. Oh my, and they left it late. A 92nd minute winner after being 1-0 down for most of the game. So, Netherlands come forward and score their early goal. Again, in a kind of a similar way, they're not very good with these sort of low crosses across the six yard area. That's where we've seen them fall down in the highlights that we've seen so far. But they got back in the 82nd minute with a perfect striker, getting on the end of the flick on there and burying that shot. And then the winner comes in the 92nd minute. It's a bronze medal, but to still win it in the 92nd minute is pretty ex... Oh, and Windle really messes things up there. The striker gets in front of the defenders, puts it in the back of the net. Beautiful stuff. So second in Europe and third in the world. Can we go better than that? So another four years in the future, it's now 2039 and these players are 33 years old. The keeper is still at Chelsea, as you can see. Uh, the perfect defender is still at Real Madrid. The perfect midfielder is still at Real Madrid, but did retire from international football last year at the age of 32. Now that's right after the 2038 World Cup. Is that foreshadowing 
a World Cup win. You know, win the World Cup, retire afterwards. It seems very early for him to retire, but it's what he's done. What about the striker? He's also still at Real Madrid, but retired in 2036. Ah, now that could foreshadow winning the European Championships, but without the perfect striker, I can't see them winning the World Cup. Let's, let's have a look, shall we? I mean, Andorra are still 18th in world rankings, which is not bad. They stayed really high up. I mean, maybe we're starting to see a bit of a decline here. They've come second in the group to Spain, who did actually win the last World Cup. But Spain had nine points on the board, Andorra only four, but they did get through. In the second round, Andorra won in extra time against Croatia to get themselves through into the quarterfinals. Played at Pride Park in Derby as well. What a terrible venue for a game. They battered Turkey 5-1 in the quarterfinals, though. Okay, we could be on for a run here. Semi-finals, they lose to Portugal too. It's Spain and Portugal who just seem to be dominating things right now. Oh, and then Belgium lose to Spain as well. So all of these teams, Spain, Portugal and Belgium, have stopped them winning a major tournament. They're the only three teams that seem to be able to stop them. And I guess it's not really a major international tournament, but looking at the Nations League, they got through to the final in 2037. Well, you guessed it, they lost to Spain. <sighs> Spain have been just so dominant. It, it's just stupid. I don't like it. Oh, the 2038 World Cup did not go well. Uh, a draw with Chile, a win over New Zealand, and then a loss in the second round to Sweden. Yeah. The striker retired in 2036. The midfielder retired after this World Cup. And as you can see, the results since then have been on the decline. Even looking to 2039, losing to Brazil and Wales. I think it's over for Andorra. Second in Europe, third in the world. That's as best as it's going to be. So we may as well go on to the end of these players' careers. And weirdly, they all retired in 2044, at the age of 38. The perfect keeper stuck out the rest of his career at Chelsea and the national team until 2043. He got 215 appearances for the national team. The perfect defender stayed at Real Madrid for 10 seasons, retired from international football in 2039, so just a year after our a midfielder at time, actually just after we joined last time for the checkup, but he got 183 caps for Andorra. The perfect midfielder also stayed at Real Madrid for 12 seasons, retired in 2030 as we saw with 164 caps and 108 goals for Andorra. What's really interesting is that he's played a lot of different positions across his career, right back, centre back, CDM and left wing back. He's played all over the place. And the perfect striker played his entire career almost at Real Madrid with 606 goals in 670 appearances. Also got 112 goals in 143 games for Andorra. Andorra have since been dropping back down the world rankings. They're now equal 49th, which is still pretty good. But since the 2038 World Cup where they lost in the second round, they've not qualified for any major tournament since then. They've not been able to get back to those heights that they once were at. And despite having three perfect players, Real Madrid only managed to win two Champions Leagues across this entire experiment. 2038-39 uh, when they had all three of the players there, and 2029-30 when they just had the striker. But interestingly, the Ballon d'Or was won seven times by the perfect midfielder and twice by the perfect striker. And the perfect keeper also picked up seven golden gloves across his career. The perfect defender won nothing. What a shame. I am so gutted that Andorra came so close yet so far to winning a major international tournament. And then after the perfect players left, they dropped off a cliff, which shows just how important those four players were to the national team. But how important are coaches? Well, I've got a video on screen for you right now where I give a non-league club the perfect coaches to see what effect that has on a club.